Welcome to Families for Life with Brian and Brian, a podcast of Oak Hill Baptist Church. On today's episode, we're doing a parenting profile with the Bilgers. Welcome. Welcome back, Brian. Welcome. Hey, Brian. It's good to see you. Yeah, welcome all the listeners. I hope everybody's doing well. Glad to be here. Yes. Um, we are excited for our this second parenting profile yes. episode. Yes. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, but before we jump into it, always remember to subscribe, give us a review, all the things. Send us an email so that we know what you're thinking about the podcast. People what are, are getting tired of us saying this over and over again. Well, well, then they need to email us and let us know things. Let, they, they need to tell to us that. F4L at oaklbc.org. Let us know. Hey, stop telling me to send you emails. Then we will. Yes. So, but. So so we are doing a parenting (laughs) profile tonight. This is our series that we do periodically. Right. One of our intermittent series. And one of the things we believe, we've talked a lot about parenting Mm -hmm. for about what it means like biblically, the whole podcast. right? Yeah. We've shared a lot from our lives. That's right. We want to get perspectives from other families. We believe right. there is a biblical perspective, a biblical theology of what what marriage, what what parenting looks like. Right. But how that's applied in it each individual's family's lives, there's some there's some right. and, some latitude and, there for it to look a little that's different. Right. And we want to foster that in the Christian community. We want people to know that there are different ways to apply these very solid and and universally held principles right. of parenting. And so with us, we've got the Bilgers. We've got uh, Gary and Mallory Bilger here with us in the room. You guys want to say hi? Hi. Hello. <laughs> so, well, well, so uh, the first question we always ask is to tell us uh, a little bit about yourself, a little about your life. Maybe a, a brief testimony, you know, just the quick version of, of how you came to Christ and what has brought you to the place where you're at. You want to go? Okay, I'll go first. Um, okay, so um, grew, I grew up from Louisville. I uh, grew up in a, a Catholic home, um, but it was more, you know, we didn't go to church or anything. It was more just uh, kind of an affiliation type thing. Um, didn't uh, really... You know, have a much uh, interest or um, you know desire to uh, or, or knowledge of what I, it meant to have a personal relationship with Christ until um, my college years. Uh, I met this lady who um, kind of pointed me in that direction. She invited me to church with her, and um, you know, I, I reluctantly went. And um, you know, it very, felt. But from the very first moment I went with her, I felt very um, pulled there. There were uh, a lot of men there that um, really invested in me, and that was the first time I ever heard the the gospel message. And you know, from there on, um, it's just been um, you know an amazing uh, walk with him. So mm-hmm. um, you know, very very grateful for uh, our experience there. Mm. And. Um So I became a Christian uh, when I was 11. Uh, I grew up in Taylorsville, Kentucky, and um, my mom took my sister and I to church regularly. We were involved there. And when I was 11, I fully understood what it needed, what um, that I needed Jesus and that I needed to be saved for my sins. Um, And I knew that God was very real in my life. Um, and I took that step of faith. Um, I made that decision. I was baptized in front of my congregation. Um, but I was spiritually a baby for a long time and, um, didn't really understand what it meant to be discipled. And so it actually was not until, um, I lived a very spiritually immature life until college and the Lord really, redirected a path um, that I had kind of set up for myself. One of the mistakes that I made as a young Christian was um, I would make decisions and then ask God to come along with me (laughs) instead of first um, seeking his will. Um, And so when I started college at Moorhead State, the Lord really um, took me to a place in my life where he said, I need you to make a choice. Are you going to be serious about following me or following the choices you have made in your life for yourself? And um, thankfully, I got involved at the 
Um, it was the Baptist Student Union then, but mm-hmm. it's the Baptist Campus Ministry now. And I actually ended up transferring to University of Louisville and where I was also involved there at the BCM, uh, which is where Gary and I met. And so at U of L, and so like, it was one of those things where I really had a pivotal moment where I was very thankful the Lord pursued me all those years, um, and didn't just allow me to become a prodigal. Mm. And so I'm very thankful for that. Um, and so from that point on until about my freshman year, um, I saw a big change in my life where I was not okay being a spiritual baby anymore. Mm. Yeah. And well, thank you guys for sharing that. I, you know, I think both of us kind of already know that story, but even just from what you were sharing, uh, I think our listeners can already pick up like how you guys ended up coming together and how God was obviously working in that, even in your own like salvation story, your, your story together. So that's yeah. the next question. How, how did you guys meet? You said it was at college, but what yes. are the specifics there? Yes. Yeah, so, um, very much a God thing um, that, that we were brought together. Um, but, yeah, we were uh, at an event. My fraternity was having a, a dinner at a pizza place downtown in Louisville. And uh, I walk in uh, to the uh, this back patio area, and I see this girl standing across the, the way. And I'm thinking, you know, i got to go talk to this girl. I, you know, I, uh, I'm not going to forgive myself if I don't do it. So I come up with this big plan that, you know, I'm going to approach her. And the best thing that I could come up with was I was going to say hi. And, <laughs> hi. So, um, yeah, and it, it, it worked. Yes. No. Well, uh, oh, I, yeah, no. What, yeah. What, so, so what I, did actually happen? So I started walking that way, and um, there was a stairwell <laughs> behind her. So I kind of just, like, got up towards her and then acted like I was going to walk around because I chickened out and uh, <laughs> go up to go up the stairwell. And then... She stops me and says that uh, she makes a comment about my shirt, says that I look good in horizontal stripes or something like that. Um, So you made the first move there. I I know it's shocking that I said the first words. Yes. So um, from there, we struck up a conversation. Like, uh, you know, I said something really smooth, like, thanks. Um, (laughs) You're nice. uh, (laughs) But no, like the, it, like we just kind of clicked from there. And, uh, but it was a while. Before was, I agreed yes. to date him. <laughs> it was. And, and, and deserved it. Was, it for right, it. Rightfully so. Um, you know, I, I was not in any place, uh, mm. you know, where I was dateable. Mm. Uh, you know, I would not want my daughter to date me at that mm. point in my life. So, um, for sure. But we became friends um, and got to know each other um, well. And I was doing a lot of growth in that, during that period of time in my life, too. And so, you know, over the next couple months and years, um you know, the Lord really showed us that he had our paths aligned for a reason. Mm -hmm. Um, I really don't think like when I met Gary, like I was not looking for like my forever, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know? So um, that was really part of the story of like um, realignment and when God kind of was working in my life. And so, uh, yeah, so we're thankful for that. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been married now? Fifteen and a half years, almost. Fifteen and a half years. Sixteen right. in April. All right, congratulations. Thank you. So, tell us about your marriage dynamic. I know this is kind of an open-ended question, but I think it's fun because you can interpret it however you want. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, as anybody that knows us, um, you know, knows that you know I'm a man of few words, and <laughs> you know my wife is kind of the exact opposite. So, um, you know, uh, I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so she's the talking of one, of, but I mean, we complement each other well, um, you know, and then as far as like our roles, like we, uh, I think we very much take a biblical approach, like, you know, we have, um, different roles, but you know, no one more important than the other. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm called to, to, to lead the home and then, um, you know, and, and, you know, we, we, we very much fulfill that role but you know it's not like a lorded over her and the kids or anything like that um you know we're we're very um supportive of one another i don't make any um you know decisions or anything without you know bringing it to to her and you know it's something that we you know talk through and pray through as a family um but um but yeah um yeah i would say that like um like gary said like he's a very 
um, strong, quiet leader. Um, Gary leads a lot by example, and um, he rarely, I will not say never, but I think this is where the trust piece comes in. He very rarely makes any kind of major decision without us talking about it first, without us praying through it first. Um, He always asks me, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think, what kind of impact do you think this will have um, on our family? You know, but we do talk to our kids about, you know, God has created families in a way that your dad is the head of our home. Mm -hmm. And we need to make sure that we are honoring that and that we were made to complement one another, not to um, control one another in a way that is, um, you know, unbiblical, that's mm-hmm. not respectful, that's not loving toward mm-hmm. one another. Um, so, you know, we appreciate that God gave us different roles. Mm-hmm. Um, that's definitely never really been a point of contention, I will say. I grew a lot. We've both had to grow a lot in that area. Um, that wasn't something growing, even growing up in a church, that was not something that was focused on a lot. Like, what does that look like? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when I married Gary, I was not quite ready for all of that. Like, I really had to figure out what it looks like to be submissive in a way that is respectful and honoring of God and, like, Gary figured out how to lead and we kind of figured that out together. Mm-hmm. So, That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Like how to, how to, how to lead and how to serve mm-hmm. respectfully, both, both respectfully. I think it's something that the church mm-hmm. needs to continue talking about. You don't yeah. just, <laughs> you don't just accidentally figure that out. Right. Um, so you guys are parents. That's why we're doing this. Um, and, uh, we, we know your kids fairly well, but we want the listeners to know, uh, you know, how many kids you have, what are their ages, anything you want us to know about them, or uh, however little you want us to know about them. That's fine, too. <laughs> so we have Maggie. She was our, our first. She's uh, 13 uh, in the youth. And then Noah, who's 12, also in the youth. And then uh, Lucas, who's the, the life of the party. Um, and he's nine. So, um, you know, Maggie's the kind of the social butterfly no and very much like like Mallory loves to um uh you know she's very uh, artistic she's uh, loves to cook and things like that loves to bake um Noah is very you know quiet and reserved more like me and um Till he's with the boys. Yes. Right. Until he's with the boys. Then, yes. he's, then he's, you yes. know. Then he's, yeah. And I mean that in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> and then Lucas uh, he's He's the wild child. Like he's got all of our, um, you know, all of our, our classic quirks. third child. <laughs> right, right. Birth order. Lucas reminds me the most of myself at his age. Like um, when I was in kindergarten, my teacher wrote, "Mallory is bossy," <laughs> and on my report card. And like Lucas, just definitely like he has to talk through everything. Yeah. Um, he has to like use all of his words mm-hmm. to like figure everything out um you know Maggie definitely like she's very um she's like Gary said she's very creative she's she loves worship Maggie and Noah both Mm. love worship Mm. um I love that about them because I grew up in a more like subdued worship environment Mm -hmm. and so uh we've really tried to help our kids understand that like if quiet like contemplation is what God's called you to in worship. That's awesome. But like if raising your hands or like, you know, singing at the top of your lungs, not to get other people to notice you, but to mm-hmm. show the Lord how much you love him, like we're all are for that. And so um, Maggie and Noah both love uh, to sing. They're, they're musically talented. Um, you know, and, and Lucas really, um, I feel like he's kind of coming into some of that too. So so, yeah, but we definitely have three very different personalities at our house. Mm-hmm. They are not the same. Um, and we've kind of found over the years that we have overarching techniques and roles mm-hmm. that we have, but yeah. we kind of have to approach them differently with each oh, of yes. our kids. Yeah, that's, that's, yes. that is that's amazing to me how 
kids can come from the same parents, and yet they're yeah. so different. Yes. You know, they're just just night and day while different. While also being similar. But, <laughs> while but something yes. similar, it's but so different. Yeah. 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 So uh, this is a fun question. Uh, what is unique about your family? Something that is just, just really unique to your family dynamic. Um, well, one, one thing I'd say is just I'm also, you know, I'm a full-time job, but also work in the military as well in the Air National Guard. So, um, you know, at least one week in a month and two weeks a year, you know, I'm away. My unit is still in Kentucky. So, um, you know, that presents a lot of unique challenges and, you know, me having to be away for that. And I've been deployed before. So, um, you know, thankfully we have a really good um, support system with our extended family. Our parents are awesome. Uh, they're very supportive of us. Um, and, and another thing that's unique about us is just how close our parents are. Like, they vacation together, which is really kind of different, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, You're talking your parents and Mallory's parents yes. are yes. close yes. friends. Close friends, yes. yes. Yeah. They, like, yeah, they'll go on cool. vacation. We go on vacation, like, with them, but then, you know, sometimes they get tired of us yeah. and go, <laughs> go, yeah. go with they, each other. They, yes. they totally yeah. do hang out together yes. when we're not around. That is unique. Wow, that's, <laughs> that that's is cool. unique. Like, it's, like, both really cool and a little scary. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this this past week, they were at a cabin in a lake for a week. Like, yeah, they were at Kentucky cool. Lake yeah. this last that's week cool. together. So... Um, you know, I would say also in regard to uniqueness about our family, um, that's, you feel like is counterculture. Um, although I know lots of families who do this and prioritize is we do try to prioritize like time around the dinner table. Mm -hmm. Um, that's really important to us. It's something that we don't do seven nights a week, but there have to be several nights Mm -hmm. a week where we're together and it doesn't always look perfect. We're mm. tired. We're, you know, everybody's bringing their stuff from the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, when we do sit down, Gary usually reads the Bible. We read the Bible at the dinner table. And sometimes the kids like to take turns reading. Sometimes I read. Um, but mostly, like, Gary leads us in um, a Bible reading at the dinner table. And we've actually gone through the Bible completely once with the kids around the dinner table and are about halfway through it again. That's great. They've um, mentioned that. I've heard, yeah, they've talked about that. I've, I've heard that from the kids before, so that is really cool. It's yeah. not perfect, you know. <laughs> it's yeah. just there are nights when, you know, people are going in different directions and it doesn't happen. I would just encourage people to, like, just do it, you know, mm-hmm. when you can. Um Sometimes you wonder, like, did any of that get mm-hmm. in? Mm-hmm. Like, everybody yeah. was tired or... You know, yeah, and and we don't have or have a set like a set plan with that. As far, I mean, we we just go straight through um, the Bible, and you know, it's not like we have to get through a chapter. You know, today it's like if it's you know a big chapter or you know it's something that we really need to talk about, then we'll just mm. you know do a, a you know a small section. It's just mm-hmm. you know kind of a, as we go through it, you know, we just kind of adapt. But um, mm-hmm. the key thing there is just consistency with it. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Like yeah. when we sit down at the dinner table, they know what we're yeah, going to do. Yeah, they like kind of expect that. Yeah, there's there's no, um, you know, there's no wondering, you know, how dinner's going to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's really cool. You guys are already kind of getting into our next uh, kind of topic of discussion. But you know, we we know you guys, and it, I, I'm glad our listeners are getting to know you guys. Kind of what what your deal is, what your family's about, and so now we want to talk about these aspects of faith, which you guys already getting into these Mm -hmm. things are all interconnected. So what are some ways that you you kind of mentioned a little bit, but what are some ways, maybe more ways that you personally try to disciple your children? You have to model it first. So they have to see you, um, you know, investing in, in the word um, and and spending time in in it and and, and in prayer with them. And then it's just really doing life with them. Um, So as they, uh, you know, go through things and go through experience. It's talking through those things in a in a biblical perspective. Um, you know, this is what God's word says. Um, you know about this, um, and just being there when they have questions. Um, you know, and uh, like telling them that no questions are off limits. Right. That our home mm-hmm. is a safe space for whatever questions they have about the Bible, whatever questions they have about the world, um, and being able to, like, encouraging. I won't say they always do this. Obviously, we're not with them all the time, but we encourage them to please come to us 
about questions that they have, whether it be about something they've learned at school or something, you know, as they're growing and they're learning about all kinds of different topics, we try to encourage them to come to us so that we can can address it through a scriptural lens because we know, we tell them, like, if we don't teach you about it, something or someone else is going mm-hmm. to. And we can't exactly. control that, but we can control what we teach you guys. And um, we do try to encourage them to keep their own personal Bible study and prayer time. That also is not a, that is a work in progress. Sure. <laughs> um, but it is something that we ask um, and talk to them about. And um, even, you know, with Lucas, we still sometimes just sit down and do it with him Yes. Um, to encourage him, you know, uh, sometimes, you know, if he wants us to do it or we make ourselves available, um, Maggie and Noah have gotten pretty regular, um, about that. You know, there'll be times when we'll ask, you know, like, how is that going? Like, how is your Bible reading? Are you, you know, are you praying regularly? And so, um, they would tell you that I ask too many questions <laughs> and I like am very much mm-hmm. like asking them things all the time about what they're doing. Um, we try in terms of discipleship, we try to serve our church together. Um, whether, you know, they see us serving and we try to include all of our family as much as we can. They also see us just trying to be, uh, we do not do this perfectly, but trying to be Christ-like neighbors to the people around us, um, just trying to serve others and Mm -hmm. just the people who are immediately around us and just reminding them that like we're doing that because that's what the Lord wants us to do. That's how he wants us to love others and so a big part of discipleship is how we prioritize the church our involvement in the church um and them just seeing us try to serve and reminding them that we're not perfect at it either Mm -hmm. yeah but that you know we are trying and and we want to to model because Mm -hmm. they like all kids know if we're being authentic or not yeah yeah well uh i would just remind listeners we did a series at the very beginning. Our mm-hmm. very first series was off of this book called Settle for Nothing Less, based out of Lifeway Research. One of the biggest factors in kids mm-hmm. sticking with their faith was the, the biggest, far and away, was them being in the Word, the word. in the home. Yep. And so if there's one thing parents can do is to encourage uh, the kids to be in the Word, uh, not only, like you're saying, reading it as a family, but also their personal devotional life. You know, that is so important, and you're right. It's not going to be perfect. It's always, you know, it's, it's you know, we have our family devotion at night, and sometimes it's just a mess, you know. <laughs> My kids are tough. I have a, a three-year-old and a two, yeah, it's. Well, I have teenagers, and it's, it's a mess, crazy. you know. Touche, touche. And, <laughs> but it's a glorious mess. Yes, yes. it really you know? is. It really is. And so yeah. you just have to keep keep with it, so. Mm-hmm. But what about uh, as a married couple? How do you encourage each other in your in your faith as a married couple? I would say that's probably a, a more of a weakness of mine is just being an encourager in general. Like that's not something that comes naturally to me as um, you know being an encourager. But um, I think it's really just you know staying engaged with what's going on uh, with one another. We have to be um, you know in sync with with what's going on in each other's life you know what we're struggling with what we're uh you know what we need help with what um you know what's you know how is um you know how's god working in your in your day-to-day we have to be in tune to that um you know and and praying with each other when we can um but yeah that's that that's something that i really have to you know sometimes force myself to um, i think it's not so much out of like not being loving, but Gary will tell you, like, I do not want to micromanage. (laughs) I don't want to micromanage things. And so like that is his, um, like personality, but he's very receptive to like, um, you know, if our family together needs to pray for something or if we need to pray for one another, um, you know, we'll just stop what we're doing Mm -hmm. and do it, you know, stop what we're doing and pray for one another. And again, that's a work in progress. Like, what does it look like to support and encourage and pray for your spouse? Like I've had some other wives like pour into me in regard to that. Um, and give me like, here are some scriptures that you can pray over your husband. And, 
Um, so, you know, anytime we have a big decision looming, um, Gary is happy to lead me in prayer. We're happy to pray together about it. Um, and if I feel the Lord leading me to something and we pray about it and he has affirmation that we're going in the same direction, Gary is very good about saying, go do the thing that God told you to do. Like, he will take care of or and vice versa i will take care of whatever needs to be taken care of at home so that the other can, you know if it's not something we're doing together like he's very supportive of me and i'm very supportive of him of just go do what you need to do like everything will be fine here so don't feel like you can't go do the thing you needed to do mm-hmm. um but also he's very good uh, and i feel like we're very good you know just about um, supporting one another, talking through things, um, and praying for one another. Like, I know Gary prays for me. Like he doesn't have to tell me, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm, like I know mm -hmm. he prays for me. Um, he knows that I pray for him. Mm -hmm. Um, and we do when we probably don't have as much, just the two of us prayer time as we would like to have, you know, Mm -hmm. because it's, it's that battle of like, you know, I'm, laying in bed and I go immediately to sleep, (laughs) you know? Mm, So it's mm -hmm. like where you would, would kind of normally do that. But, um, you know, we really, I can think on many, many occasions where, you know, we've just stopped and said, you know, we need to, we need to look at scripture and see what it says about this, or we need to pray about this together. Mm -hmm. And so just being that support, supportive of one another and listening Gary's a mm-hmm. good listener. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and being a, a man of few words, uh, I know like my dad is like that. And usually when, when he has something to say, he's really thought through it Yeah, and it, he doesn't need very many words. I'm not like that. Um, <laughs> so, um, but I respect it. Um, so one of the questions we had on here is about encouraging your kids faith. We've kind of talked a lot about that already, but um, is there anything that you guys would want to add or Gary, is there anything that you can think of that you would like, like as you're trying to not just like direct their faith, but, but really like encourage them. It, is there ways that you try to do that? Uh, I think, I mean, definitely modeling it for them and owning your mistakes. Like when you mess up, like, mm. um, owning, and, the, and especially if they're involved in that too, mm-hmm. like, um, coming to them and, you know, asking for their forgiveness. Um, you know, that's, uh, when they see that, that mom and dad are willing to, you know, swallow their pride, mm. um, you know, that, I think that goes a long way with them. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like we talk a lot with them, you know, just talk a lot about everything with them in regard to the Bible, you know, yeah. and like what that means to live a, a life that doesn't look like the life that the, you know, what mm. so many people around them are mm-hmm. living. Yeah. Um, you know, we challenge them with scripture and we encourage them, you know, to to challenge us, like if there's something that's on their hearts that the Lord's laid on their hearts to share with us. Um, One thing about our faith is that we tell them like, we may not have the answer, like, Mm -hmm. but we'll find, we'll try to find it Mm -hmm. together. Um, um, Gary prays. I I wanted to bring that up. So, um, you know, I'm the one because Mallory works at the school and has to be there earlier in the morning. I'm the one that, um, has to to take the kids to school every day so um that's kind of my one-on-one time to talk to them about okay what do you and it's you know usually you know a a five ten minute ride but you know what are the i get to ask each one of them you know what are uh what's going on today what's Mm -hmm. the um you know what what are your uh concerns what do you um you know what are you worried about today and then we kind of pray through that together Mm -hmm. um so, and then, you know, we also pray for, you know, just opportunities for them to, to share their faith with others, to uh, just to be an encouragement for what that, with one of their, you know, to their peers and mm-hmm. their teachers and to, to point them to Christ. So I feel great. like we really try to challenge them. Like we have told them, like, there's really two times, two kinds of relationships you're going to be seeking out. Like you're going to be seeking out the lost and you're mm-hmm. going to be seeking relationships where you have the opportunity to share Christ, but you're also the people that you want to be your closest confidants. Like those people Mm -hmm. need to be brothers and sisters in Christ. Those people need to be um, Mm. people who will give you sound 
advice and pray for you. And so, um, you know, we really try to talk to them a lot about the relationships Mm -hmm. um, that they have to encourage them in their faith and to not be afraid, you know, to share and not be afraid. Don't keep their light hidden. Mm -hmm. Um, So we talk about that a lot. Yeah, that's great. What, uh, what role does the church play in your family? You know, I'm thinking about the church. I'm not just saying like going to church or church activities. I'm thinking about the community of believers, the, the church as we understand it being the, the body of gathered believers. What does that, what does that, um, what role does that play in your family? It's, it's very much a partnership. Um, you know, it's, it, our, our kids' faith is, it's, it's at, like we're responsible for, um, ministering them to discipling them that's that's our role as parents but um we know that um you know our kids can't always listen to us they're not always going to listen to us mm-hmm. um i know you talk about uh the it was uncle jimmy mm-hmm. all the time uncle you know? jimmy principle exactly mm-hmm. um so we need to partner with um you know other believers to um, to really pour into our kids and, uh, you know, and we want to be that for other families as well. That's why we serve with the, the youth and the, uh, the third graders and just any opportunity that we get because uh, we know just that, you know, we, there are things we struggle with in our, with our kids that we need, uh, you know, that complement of, of, of other believers. You know, we want to be that for others as well. You know, I, when I saw this question, you know, I thought like, Man, I don't know that I can express, like, how important our community of believers is to us. Um, There are just things that we were not meant to figure out on our own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Lord gave us the community of believers. Like, I was thinking about, I was like, I can't even name all the influential people who love the Lord who pour into our kids. Like, from our Sunday morning life group leaders, to our youth leaders, to our pastors, to our upward coaches, our Awana leaders. And then I was thinking about people from our old church who um, poured into them and, you know, saw two of our kids come to faith in Christ before we moved to Evansville. And those people still check on our on our kids and they want to know how they're doing. And um, that encouragement, you know, that's so important. Those families that, you know, that we have friendships with who we know that we can come to when we need prayer and when we need encouragement. Um, you know, the, the church is, is such a blessing to us in that we don't have to do the life alone. Mm. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, obviously, that's one of the big principles we want to communicate is that we've got to do this together. We do, you know, the, there's, there's one way of looking at, you know, it takes a village and then there's the, the biblical way of looking at it takes a village. And that's what the church is there for. Mm -hmm. Um, but as we parent, you know, there are some practical things that we've got to consider. And so we want to ask you guys some questions about that. So first regarding, you know, correcting behavior, how do you guys try, and I understand, you know, we all, <laughs> any parent hearing this question is like, yeah, this is a good question. Um, how do you correct behavior without provoking or exasperating your children? Gary's way better at this than I am, so I'm going to let him go first. Mm-hmm. Well, at, at, it's, it's like we've said before, how like each kid is different, like how you discipline them has to be different too. Um, because they all respond different. Like, uh, if I, I can't go to Noah and Maggie the same way because it's going to stress one of them out and, uh, you know, they're going to, you know, completely have a meltdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas the other one is just going to be like, okay, yeah. you know, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's different. Um, so, but I, I think it's just being in tune to, um, how your kids respond, um, and being patient, uh, through that um, and not being too uh, reactive um, it, because like the more reactive you are, the more um, like if, if they get escalated and then you get escalated with them, then that mm-hmm. just kind of feeds off of each other. Um, so remaining calm is, is, is key in that. And that's that man, that's hard to do. I don't sometimes. think I've ever seen you like an very animated, like you are affectionately <laughs> called gear bear by the boys. <laughs> And they like literally, like, bear. You know, like they, they really love it. but like, and yeah, like you can de-escalate the, the you help lead with the middle school guys yeah. to give some context, yeah. and that's that's difficult. 
But uh, yeah, I would I would be interested to see uh, <laughs> you get yeah. get animated. It, ha- it happens. <laughs> I, I promise you, it does. I'll talk. I'll talk to I'll talk to the kids later. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yes. Well, I feel like you know the Lord knew that about me. I tend to be um, an emotional reactor, and I have to pull myself back. It's like I have to catch myself in the moment and step away and say, okay, I need to go like say a quick prayer. I need to collect my thoughts. Um, we have the verse hanging by the kitchen sink for myself as much as for the kids. Um, a soft answer turns away wrath um, because good. I am not mm. very good at the soft answer. And like of all of our children, like I know that that's probably one thing that they would say, like mom goes from like zero to 60 really quick. <laughs> so I do have to step back and collect myself and be very awareness of that is something that is definitely part of my sanctification process. Um, You know, like um, trying not to respond emotionally, like remembering, you know, in the moment what God's promises are and that our emotions do not always tell the truth. Mm -hmm. Um, And so like um, something that I have learned Um, that is largely ineffective in spurring my kids on towards righteousness is yelling at them. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's something that I catch myself in all the time, Um, arguing with them, giving out consequences without explanations to them, Um, and then failing to explain um, the expectation from the get-go. Like, you have to have a consistent expectation Mm -hmm. or they don't know what bar they're you know, trying to reach. And so being consistent is key. I fail in this a lot, um, but I do feel like I've improved in it over the years um, because we are their thermometer. Like we're going to set the tone and the temperature for how the conversation's going to go. So it's one of those things where if I enter the room like upset, they're going to feel that and Mm -hmm. we're going to start off like, arguing instead of having a conversation now they know at the end of the day that gary and i are in charge and that their job is to be respectful and to obey the rules that we put in but um if they know we care about what they have to say then um that we're just not barking orders at them for with with no reasoning behind them um they know and because we tell them all the time God loves us and he gave us authority because he knows what's best. God gave you us and we have authority over you because that is a structure that he wanted the family to have. Right. Um, so consistency is, is key there and keeping a calm, you know, head so that it doesn't turn up into a, a you know, everything blew up. Like mm-hmm. what just happened? Like, I don't yeah. even remember what we were yeah. arguing about. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and one thing we've learned with, it's, it's more with, with one of the kids, and, you know, I won't, I won't yeah. say which one, but, um, y- you know, when, when you're correcting that, that, that kid in the moment, um, you know, things can escalate pretty quickly. Um, so you have to be consistent in that you are, you know, addressing the, the behavior, what's going on, but you also have to give them time to, mm. uh, you know, kind of go and collect their thoughts and, and calm down and then have a you know, a rational conversation. So it's like, it's like exp- you know, you kind of already know how they're going to act. So like, yes. don't be mm-hmm. surprised or goaded by that. Yes. Right. For sure. Yes. And yeah. I think that that applies to <laughs> us in a marriage too. Like, um, we might just need to give each other a moment to collect our thoughts and to calm down and then come back and have a, an actual productive conversation. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, another big topic when it comes to children in our day and age is media. Mm-hmm. That's a huge thing. And and parents, Christian parents, run the gamut of yeah, all of all, this. Yeah. So mm-hmm. just, you know, asking you, what are your stances on media with your kids, just so we can get your perspective? You want me to go yeah, first? Go okay. First, yeah. <laughs> um, so we do allow our kids to watch TV and to use the Internet, but it is – Um, in a very controlled environment. Um, We have screen time limits, um, and they um, know that that limit is two hours or less a day. And on Tuesdays, we have no screen day. They don't love that. (laughs) (laughs) But um, it's funny because that's when they end up being the most creative or right. when they spend the most time with one another because there's nothing distracting them. So we, especially during the school year, we set aside a day where um, 
we just don't get on our screens for anything. So, mm-hmm. um, our kiddos do play video games, but they're very, um, we just, we don't do violent video games. We, um, like our kids have a, what is that thing we have? I don't even know what it's called. What is that? The switch. The, the switch yes. Oh. And like it stays on the dock and they play yeah. it on the TV in the living room. And then we have an eighties arcade, <laughs> yeah. which, you know, is, has been fun as mm-hmm. much for Gary as for the, the kids, <laughs> but, um, our kids don't have TVs in their rooms and they won't ever. Mm. And, um, you know, Maggie has an iPod, but none of our kids have phones mm. yet. I'm sh- we will get them a phone at some point, but they don't have them uh, yet. And um, we they have Chromebooks for school, so those are extremely controlled. And um, they know whatever device they have, whether they brought their Chromebook home or their iPod or whatever, all of those things come out of their rooms at night. The and Chromebooks are issued by the school? They are, mm-hmm. yes. Um, but, like, Lucas doesn't have one. So, and honestly, the Chromebooks issued by the school, like, are set up with even more security than, like, yeah, our home what, computer. That's what I thought, yeah. It's, they know that, like, really the only thing they can do on them is schoolwork. Yeah. It won't, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, they yeah. can't do anything else. So, um, oh, and we have one computer, and it's in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. So... And, and it's on dial-up. No, it's <laughs> AOL. <laughs> um, but, and, and we have parental controls on everything as far as, like, our, you know, our TVs and, um, you know, computer and, and whatnot. Um, everything's, you know, got passwords and whatnot. But uh, one thing, you know, that, that's just, it's such a struggle. They're, yeah. Like, everything, e- no matter what you put on there, like, kids, they they can just find a way around it. They're geniuses. Yeah, I know. And it's, and it's not like they're doing it maliciously. It's just, they just figure it out. And it's mm-hmm. like, ah, uh, so, yeah. so yes. Yeah, so the, the series that you guys did on like, um, you know, parenting in a, in a digital world or, or you know, whatever, I'm sorry. No, that, the yeah. name wrong. I think <laughs> it was digital invasion, um, but yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, um, that, that was very, you know, beneficial, okay. um, as far as like what, what mm. tools and stuff we can use. Um, for and there, we so. watch things with them. Yes. That's mm. kind of the benefit of having the computer in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Like, usually the boys are on it when I'm making dinner right. or something. Like, they, nobody's downstairs at midnight on the computer mm-hmm. by themselves. Yeah. Right. And yeah. and it's locked. They don't know the password. They have to ask permission to get on it. And it's we're not against them watching TV. We're not against them using the Internet. It's just such a fire hose mm-hmm. of information. And that's kind of what we've tried to explain to them is they don't even know all the things that we're protecting Mm, them from. I'm like, I'm not even going to explain all of them to you yet because you're not even ready to hear all of the things that we are protecting. Exactly. I'm like, I just need you to trust that, that we have your best interest Mm -hmm. at heart. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, you know, you, you already talked about kind of uh, protecting and the, there's this idea that there's danger in the world, right? Um, that's real. So what do you do to, uh, not just protect, but also empower your kids to stand on God's word against a worldly culture? I think you really have to have those conversations, you know, as you're going through life together and they're, exposed to stuff but unfortunately they get exposed to so many things at such a a young age now that you know you're kind of forced to have some of those difficult conversations Mm -hmm. earlier um you know and you can have them age appropriate but um you know you have to have those conversations of this is what the bible says um so that they know um you know what we believe and why we believe it you know when they see something different in the world um, because it's it's, it's they're constantly being bombarded with it and you can't shelter them from it. Yeah. 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 And I think, um, you know, we said this earlier that like home is a safe place to ask questions and to have discussions. And, um, one of the things that, um, you know, we've talked to our kids about is that like, we have to see something in culture and we have to take that and we have to, line it up with God's standard and see where it falls, Mm. um, according to scripture. And, you know, um, abortion was a big topic, um, in the last year. And like that, there were a lot of conversations that our kids were coming home and having Mm. 
other kids at school were talking about it. Other kids at, Mm -hmm. you know, in different places, they were hearing kids talk about it in lots of different ways and in places. And so, you know, like we just have lots of conversations about everything, you Mm -hmm. know, about sexuality, about money, about like the cheapening of like marriage commitments in Mm -hmm. our society. Um, And we try to remind them that like if they feel rejected, that it's Jesus they're rejecting, Mm -hmm. you know, that Jesus warned us, like the world hated me and it's going to hate you too, but our reward isn't here on this side of heaven. And one of the, my favorite um, things that we talk about a lot is that God's going to call you to do scary things, hard things, things that invoke fear in you and that courage isn't doing it and not being afraid. Mm -hmm. Courage is doing it even, Even though, if you are afraid, yeah, mm-hmm. knowing it's the right thing. Yeah, that's so, good. So um, my favorite um, Elizabeth Elliot quote uh, says, sometimes when we are called to obey, the fear does not subside and we are expected to move against the fear. One must choose to do it afraid. Mm-hmm. And so we talk about that a lot, that sharing our faith in certain circumstances can be scary. Mm-hmm. It can be yeah uncomfortable it's probably going to be sometimes and so just letting them know that we feel those things too and that the lord the holy spirit gives us what we need Mm, to push through those yeah kind of in the same vein but thinking more about uh aspect of schooling and extracurricular activities and things that the the kids are involved with other kids um you know how do they help how do you help your kids to be in the world but not of the world you know i know that your kids go to a christian school and uh you know i make you know, the Christian schools are amazing. They're awesome. We're very thankful for them, but not everyone there <laughs> is, is, has a Christian perspective. Would you agree with that? Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking the students, sure. you know, right, right. Um, and you can, you can speak more to that as, as somebody that works there. So, well, you know, um, first of all, so yes, we, um, go to Evansville Christian school, which, um, man has been a big blessing mm-hmm. in our lives. Um, a huge answer to prayer Our just to give you all some background, before we moved, when we lived in Kentucky, our kids also went to a small private Christian school there. And that is something that um, we felt like at a very young, I specifically remember praying with Gary when our kids were little, little, one and two. Um, what are, are we going to send our kids to preschool? Like, what's that going to look like? What, what are we going to do? And um, the Lord laid that path on our heart from a very young age. And so... Um, But the thing people don't realize about Evansville Christian School is an evangelistic school. You do not have to be a Christian family to go to school there. Mm -hmm. So the school, and that was also um, how it was at our old school. And uh, I don't know the percentage at ECS, but I know at our previous school, 40% of our families were not believers. Mm -hmm. And so school was a huge mission field. And I can tell you from conversations that we have with our kids it's still a really big mission field. Mm -hmm. Um, And so this idea that like kids, our kids don't have opportunities to have like Mm -hmm. conversations about their faith and about, and witnessing, like that's just not true. They get that opportunity every single day. Um, Oh yeah. I I had no, I didn't know that about ECS. So that's, that's actually really good to know Yeah, to even, you know, as I, as their youth pastor, I'm trying to, you know, equip them like that's, that's helpful. Okay. Yeah. And so that's definitely, you know, I love, um, our school's mission, but we are for the first time ever over a thousand students this year. And even if you have a thousand students who's like, you're, there are some people in that mix who might even say we're a Christian family, Mm -hmm. but that, faith is not maybe genuine or it's not lived out the way that you would expect it to be. And so, um, you know, that's definitely um, been a big part. Uh, Biblical integration in their education was really important to us. We wanted them learning things from a biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, And they learn how to support their faith, how to refute things that are not true. Um, so, you know, that's definitely, that's our, cho- you know, we cert- we have friends who homeschool, we have friends who go to public school, mm-hmm. we have friends that go to secular right. private school. So we definitely don't say like, oh, well, that's the only way you can mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. But for us, um, we really wanted some entity that we could partner with. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, that's where 
um, Spencer Christian, our previous school in ECS, has been a huge mm-hmm. benefit to us. Um, Similar to the church. I mean, it's yeah. With, we've, yeah. They're their teachers. They're uh, you know the, they haven't taken our role away from us as far as like educating our kids. You know, they just kind of supplement. Yeah. Um, and and they see it know, as a well, partnership. I, yes. I uh, I was actually in an event recently, and I was sitting at a table, and uh, the counselor for ECS was at my table. Yeah. And she knew knows every single student. So we have several students in the youth group that go to ECS. She knew all of them by name, and we were like talking about different families. It was super encouraging. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that like she is, and it was encouraging to me to know that she was also like trying to invest mm-hmm. in their lives as well. Man, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. She came to me and she told me she met you. <laughs> oh, and cool. Okay. That particular counselor has been really, yes. really impactful yeah. in Maggie and Noah's life. She hasn't had time to get to Lucas yet. But, man, when we talk about that community of people that we have, yeah. um, that's part of that story. Um, and, you know, I would encourage Christian families to just think about you know, what you want your child to be learning, how you want them to be learning it, and who you want to be in charge of it. Yeah, and I think it's important, you know, you, you brought up a good point about, you know, you guys have your perspective. This is one of those things that we ask parents to pray about and find their their own kind of way in this according mm-hmm. to how we understand and interpret Scripture and how we mm-hmm. apply it to our lives, whether it's public school, Christian school, home school, whatever type of school that you're a part of. Um, that's something that you have to pray about, but 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 I think it's it's what you're saying is be intentional about right. it. You yeah. know, right. don't don't just go to school accidentally. Think about it. Think through um, what you know what the what your children are are going to be encountering, and then how you can direct your parenting and you can pour into them based on that. And I think that's really important. Is that once again we're not we're not saying one is better. Right. We're, again, it's that Christian that principle of how parenting, you know, it's and it's an intentional like you taking ownership of this mm-hmm. and then and then partnering with the right people that you, you know, right. are you're choosing for the purpose of raising up your child, children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. That's the principle we're talking about and this is just how you guys do it. I mean, me and Brian, this is one thing. I don't know our listeners know this, but like we ha- we are pretty opinionated about this topic, but we want to stay really uh focused on the 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 principle because we understand that not everybody's like us, but we all know that as Christians, we do want to stick to that. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have any opinions <laughs> mm-hmm. about anything. The well, listeners who know us know that that's not true. Uh, well, and I think a big piece of that, um we I was a uh, journalist. I was I was a reporter for 14 years before um, I started working. Um, I've worked in the school where our kiddos are. This is my eighth year in preschool. Um, I uh, right now I am an, a teaching assistant. I have been a, a classroom teacher, and one of the big things for us was. Um, if we do not feel like the Lord's calling us to homeschool, we need to be involved mm. where they are at mm-hmm. school. Um, well, and that's a big thing, it, whether it's public school, Christian school, absolutely. you can be involved in the school. Yeah, that's that's really important. I'm like, I always want to be on the inside of where they are. Right. Um, and I, because I can do that, I can talk to Gary about a lot of things, about what I see, who I know, teachers that I have relationships with. Um, And so, like, that was a big burden for us. We felt like, you know, if we're going to go this route, like, one of us needs to be in the building Mm -hmm. with them. And that, I'm I'm not in the building with them anymore, but still in the system. Like, the group of teachers and administrators, like, we all come together lots. And so. That's great. Well, so as we start to kind of wrap this up, you know, people have learned a lot about you guys and, you know, we've learned more about you. Um, and we hope that this will just be helpful to our listeners to, again, to get a profile of, of parents who are really seeking to follow the Lord faithfully. As you guys kind of wrap this up, what would you give to parents? What's the most important piece of advice that you would want other Christian families to know? Um, you don't have to have it all figured out. Um, we certainly do not. In fact, when we were 
asked to, <laughs> to do this. Like we were both kind of <laughs> hesitant because we don't really think that highly of ourselves as parents. Um, and it's not that we think we do a terrible job, but I mean, it's just, you know, you're, 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 you're kind of being vulnerable here, but, yeah. um, you know, nobody has it all figured out. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you can't base like your parenting abilities off, you know, what you see, how other kids are, are, are acting and whatnot, right. because, mm-hmm. you know, you're only seeing a snapshot of it. Um, and, uh, and also I was talking to, to somebody else about this last night. Um, you know, you see the worst part in your kids. Like, so if, 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 if you're doubting your abilities as, as a parent, um, you know, you're seeing the worst part of it. You're not seeing how they are in school. You're not mm-hmm. seeing how they are, you know, with other people, with their friends. Um, so you can't, you know, judge and make that decision and be too hard on yourself, um, yeah. you know, because you're going to get, you're going to get the worst of it. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I think we tend to sh- give the people we love the most, we're the most mm-hmm. vulnerable with them and in front mm-hmm. of them. And so, you know, they are a safe space. And so, you know, that's kind of, I feel like where that comes from. But, um, I would just encourage, uh, parents, um, who love the Lord to stay humble and to seek the Lord's wisdom. I mean, there have been times like in our parenting journey where my prayer literally was like, Lord, just help me, Mm -hmm. please just help Mm -hmm. me. Like, I don't even really know what I need in this moment, but I know that I need help. And so just to be very grace filled to other families and like, don't assume that, you know, the inner workings of another family. Um, because a lot of times people only let you see what they let you see, you know, um, the Lord has humbled me so many times. Um, and like many, many times over all kinds of different parenting issues. And I am just like, Oh, you know, there's like that meme floating around that says that like, you know, as parents, you know, sa- you said your kids would never and mm-hmm. they're nevering like they mm-hmm. never, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like you just have a lot of <laughs> those moments that. of like, okay, like mm, I'm gonna need to back that up just a little bit. Um, stay consistent, and like you're going to get tired of coming up against the culture. And the Lord is the only thing I feel like that will give you the energy that you need to fight against that. That's good. That's really really good. good. You just will get, because it is, I mean, our kids are normal kids. They ask for things that we say no to all the time. (laughs) And sometimes every day, you know, no, (laughs) the answer is still no today, you know, Mm -hmm. and, um, live out your faith at home. Um, or it will not translate into your child's life later. And I won't say 100% of the time because the Lord does all kinds of work, but if you're not living out your faith in home in front of your kids, it's not a priority to them. And so, um, you know, and prioritize corporate worship, church time with the church body. Um, I know this is a sensitive subject, but we limit the amount of extracurricular activities our kids can be involved in. That's not always like a popular opinion, but it's what we do to preserve family time Mm -hmm. and to preserve the fact that we want them here on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. And does that mean we don't miss a day every now and then? Sure. We do. Of course. We we try to protect that as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And they never never have any doubt or any question about where we're going on Sunday or Wednesday. And I know that you guys have said that before, too, in your house. Like, you don't get up on Sunday and talk about, what are we going to do? What are we going to do today? Mm -hmm. Everybody just knows what's going on. My my kids are learning the days of the week because of Sunday Sunday and Wednesday. They're, like, starting to figure out what the days of the week are. That's cool. Yeah, it's kind of fun. We do so many amazing things over the summer at Oak Hill, but, like, Wednesday and Sunday mark time for them. Mm -hmm. Even our kids as preteens and teenagers, you know, and Lucas and I, like, during the summer they get all, like, discombobulated. Like, (laughs) you know, like, what day? What day is it? You know, but um, those things are um, something they look forward to, you know, and not that there haven't been moments where they're like, oh, I don't feel like going today, Mm -hmm. you know, but – by and large, they look forward to it. And then just to pray and pray and pray more for your children and your family. And like when you feel like you don't have any more words, pray a little bit more because uh, I feel like that's been uh, knowing what the word says and prayer. Those are our 
some of our biggest um, weapons Mm -hmm. against Satan. Yeah. And so, and just expect those attacks. I feel like every time we have made a decision that we know, like, this is the Lord moving our family in this direction, like, there's Mm -hmm. almost immediately Mm -hmm. some kind of attack. Yeah, that's 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 really good. Yeah, that's a lot of really good things uh, for people to think about. Are there any resources that you'd recommend for Christian parents? Anything that you that God has used in your life? Of course, we know the Bible. We can, of course, yes. <laughs> um, the Bible. But I mean, just uh, again, partnering with the church is such a huge part of it. So you know, leaning into um, you know you guys uh, as as pastors. Um, yeah, I'm. that's okay that's all right um this podcast yes yes (laughs) and i don't say that (laughs) i'll get your commission later (laughs) ring that bell no i promise we were not paid or compensated um for that no but seriously like the church the what we see our our pastors and our church promoting we Mm. always within reason um Check that out, you know, yeah. because we know that that's being recommended to us. Some things that I was thinking, um, I tend to be more of like an article reader than Gary is, but I'll be like, read this. This is really good. Um, and some we um, read a lot of things from Focus on the Family. Mm-hmm. That is a big, um, you know, they have a lot of podcasts. They have a lot of articles, a lot of great materials. Um, and ash- actually, and I really, I don't know if she pronounces her last, I think it's, Coke, Kathy Coke, um, she wrote a book called Eight Great Smarts, and she is a Christian educator, and her perspective is wonderful when it comes to teaching your children and helping um, really promote your child's spiritual gifts and helping them not only figure out what those are, but to help them learn to struggle well, Mm -hmm. you know, and so... um, a couple other things I thought about was um, Dr. James Dobson, The Strong-Willed Child, mm. was a book that mm. I read um, and I go back to a lot. Um, and we use Answers in Genesis a lot, mm. too. So mm-hmm. um, those are all things. But, you know, definitely just staying in the Word. And, you know, I would encourage parents that if you feel like you've been lacking in your Bible studies, just sit down with your kids and be like, you know what? We're starting. Like, yeah. we're going to start now. We're going to come up with yeah. a plan. We're going to do this. And so, because there are lots of great resources, um, but the the problem I found early in our parenting was that I was wanting to read a lot of books, but I wasn't studying my Bible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, it's like you really have to know what Scripture says in order to know if the parenting advice is right. solid. Yes. So, That's true. Yes. Um, just want to encourage people in that. Um but yeah, there's lots of great resources on That's focus great. on the family too. So yeah, yeah. I, I just recently read an article by Desiring God about parenting, and it hit me right where I'm at because it was about like cleaning up messy, messy diapers and. Mm, that's right really where good. you're at. That's yeah. right where I'm at. I'm, I've so. gotten past that, so yeah, thankful. Well, yeah. Be thankful. Praise God. Be thankful. Yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so many good things out there, and I think you know one of the things I would say as far as resources is other parents, like you guys yeah. just said. That's again the point of the church, but like you know, I talked to Brian, like what you just said, and the way you ha- you know, like you've been past this. You guys, all 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 of you have been past where I'm at, so I can learn mm-hmm. from you guys, how you dealt with these different things and the struggles that I'm going to have that I don't even know I'm going to have yet. Yeah, I think you said something that we were having a pre-show meeting and I thought Mallory said something about um, how we need to kind of remove the stigma of like thinking that we we put this like perfect parenting Mm -hmm. front up and, you know, the community of believers needs to come together and pray for one another and encourage one another. And I love like our life group because we're we're pretty honest about where our kids are at and who's struggling with what, and um, kids that are even struggling with their faith in our life group. Mm-hmm. And so we can really rally together and pray for one another mm-hmm. and encourage one another and find ways to uh, be there for one another. And I think that was really insightful. Yeah. And I, th- and I think, too, like you were talking about uh, talking with parents that have been through that already or that stage, um, I think it's it equally as beneficial on the other end of that because mm. you hear, you know, okay, we're not unique in that we went through that mm. you know, or that our kid did that. So it's, you know, it's, it's kind of reassuring that, you know, <laughs> that, that, that you're not unique. You're not alone. Right. 
um, you know, other people are, are going through what you've gone through. Mm-hmm. Before, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, that's good. And that we have reminded ourselves that, like, we manage um, the blessings that God has given us. You know, our kids are the, you know, some of the very biggest blessings we have in this life. Um, but that um, we manage those blessings, but they belong to God. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're you stewarding know? them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're not, they're not ours yeah. to keep forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. guys, thank you so much for yeah. coming on and sharing your uh, perspective, how you are seeking to honor the Lord with your children that you are stewarding. And we love being able to be a part of that with you. And so thank you for letting us, you know, join you in that endeavor. And so other parents, listeners, people, if you go to our church, know that we, you know, love you and we're here for you guys. If you uh, our listener doesn't go to our church. We hope and pray that you've got a church, uh, a group of people that you can uh, parent your children alongside of. That's right. And so we just want to encourage you in that. And we want to thank you for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. We'll see, we'll see you, you next time. time. <laughs> that was what the the news. That's what the news. Oh says. yeah, <laughs> Maggie, Maggie Dilger. Yeah. Oh, she'll love that if we use her. Yeah. Yeah. Byron. John, can Byron you put Gocher. this in? Yes. Can you put this in the? Uh, what was it called? The uh, the blue. Are we still doing bloops? Yeah. <laughs> Yay. You've really been listening, haven't you? I don't listen to all. Listen, I. Some people like to listen to themselves talk. Busted. <laughs> yes. I do quality control. Yeah. <laughs>